If anybody else already has decided they wish to leave to go with the kids, now would be the time. Psalm 19, Behold Our God. Those, those are great songs to sing with this chapter. This One of the most prominent of the Psalms, which says, Hello, God has made the creation, all the world, all the universe, and He has given clear instructions to us on how to live our lives and how to find eternal life. I first met Brian a long time ago. He arrested me here in uh, St. Joe. Now, uh, two of his friends who are, they meet regularly as pastors are, are two that I have coached, and they just recommended that we walk this way because of my good experience in, in churches for 45 years, two churches. So that's, that's my connection, and I'm just glad to be here to help on a vacation day for him. So Psalm 19, let's go back and look at it a little more now. Uh, Psalm 19, it's, it's, it's very clear uh, exactly what God's trying to tell us in this fantastic chapter. Let's see if Psalm 19. Um, just to know what I do as a hobby, I, I do a water show here in Lake Michigan every Saturday at 5 if you ever want to come. Now here's a picture from yesterday. The cow was so much harder to train than the dolphin, as you, as you can imagine. No, that's, that's, in case you're a literalist, no, that's not true. That was just for fun. Psalm 19. It starts off, and your outline on the back of the bulletin has, has a, uh, you can look at that and know about when I'll be done. I'll be done when we get to the bottom of that. Creation glorifies God. That's, that's where he starts. Can anyone in the room say anything as big as inventing and creating a universe? I don't think so. God is in charge of this. A universe that stretches so many light years, a light year, kids, is 186,000 miles per second. And estimates from the James Webb Telescope, the new one that's up there, talk about trillions of miles of light year travel, and nobody goes that fast, to get across what they can see of the universe. Hello, if you don't think grandeur and worship when you see the universe, you've got to back up. So he talks about this. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Every day. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Creation points to God. Do you believe that? Do you just look up and, and yawn when you see a sunset? One time, uh, we live not far from Lake Michigan and sometimes go over there to watch the sunset. And I came up and from the, uh, some stairs and people were watching the sunset at 9.04 at night that evening. How did they know 9.04 at night? Because the weatherman told them that's when we're going to know because God has such a system and such a schedule and things operate in many ways as He created them. The main deviant is the human being, as we know. But clearly, we're not to stand there and say, whoa, look how great that is. But at least in our minds and in our prayers and in our witness to thank God and give Him credit. It was back in April that they told us there would be an eclipse. And they didn't say, look for it sometime in April. We think it's going to be probably around the middle. No, they tracked it all from Texas. People drove to Texas and, Oak and I forget what other states, but I know they drove to around Cleveland because they had the path of the perfect image of the eclipse. And the exact time it would come. How do they do that? Because God has made systems. Thank Him. Look at your hands someday. 
I can do this with my hands. So can all of you, unless there's some problem, but I can do it behind my back. The point is, God has given us a brain and a, and a body that functions in amazing ways. It's all His work. Do you believe that? Take a look around and don't just yawn, but give Him glory. That's what the psalmist is saying. Verse 3, They have no speech. They use no words. They don't say anything. The stars don't have signs on them that say made by God. Clearly, it's up to us. The heavens declare. If you look at a beautiful building, or I walk into this building, I think, beautifully done, well made. We don't say, look how that fell together. I wonder how that happened. I believe, with many of you, I don't ever want to argue this, that God said, let there be light, and there was light, just like that. If He says it, it is so. When God split the Red Sea for the Egyptians uh, to save the Israelites from the Egyptians, they could see them coming. He didn't say, if you'll wait here about two months, I think I can get this sea to split. He just said, divide. When Jesus was on the Sea of Galilee and there was a storm, you know this story in two of the Gospels? He said two words, peace, stop it. That's three words, but he said stop. And because he says it, it is so. The heavens declare the glory of God. Don't look at a new baby and just say, boy, is she cute. But also give thanks to God. Their voice, look at it. Verse 3, they have no speech. There are no banners in the sky. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Clearly, yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. There is no sign up in the heavens or on the moon or in front of the sun that says, please give God glory. But the psalmist is saying that should be the result. By the way, no wonder so many people in the past have worshipped the sun. It's so grand. It's so amazing. 93 million miles away, yet it shines and it comes exactly the time it's scheduled every day and leaves at night. This was all programmed by a person. Do not take it for granted. The psalmist is just saying to me and to you, you guys, honor him as creator. Trust him with your life, we read in other verses and at the end of this. Will you do that? Do you just wave at creation or study science and say, okay, that's pretty pretty great. A lot of your friends and maybe some of you think it just happened and there's no creator behind it or no designer. You wouldn't go into an art studio and say, neat how these paintings fell together. We do that about God and He's patient. But these verses say what we should do. You wouldn't look at a new car. I saw some good cars out here. Drove up in a decent car. You wouldn't look at it and say, nice how that fell together. It was created and designed and put together. You wouldn't look at a house or a building like this and say, wow, look how the wind blew that together. No, you would honor Recently, we had a tree removed from our house down in Sawyer. And it was 100 feet high, and it was diseased, and it had to be taken out. It was going to fall on me or my wife or someone else or our house. They brought in a, one of the machines they brought in was a Merlot machine from Italy that cost the woodsman $450,000. I was going to do it with my little saw, orange saw, 
nobody looked at them taking that tree down and grabbing the huge 10,000 pounds parts of the trunk by the Merlot machine and said, oh, that just ha amazing how that machine fell together. Honor Him as Creator. Will you do that? Will you in your prayers and in your thoughts as you look at the universe or a new baby, honor Him as Lord? Especially a new baby. His highest creation, yo, is the human being. And God said it was good. And we all know it was good. So I'm going to ask you a couple times, do you honor Him as Lord and Creator? You wouldn't walk into the art studio and not look for the artist if he's there. So the psalmist is saying, obey. Sometimes ask Siri how many stars are in our galaxy. She knows. Siri knows everything. Then say, how many galaxies are there in the universe? And she'll use the word billions. Everybody knows this. Some respond by giving the Creator honor. Is that you? Do you honor Him with your day and your... Then he switches subjects a little bit. Verse 5, or 4. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the earth. The last part of 4. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens, this is the sun, and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Okay, maybe some days you say it's too hot, or where's the sun, but it's reliable. And it starts over in the east, I think it's that way, I'm not positive, and goes over to the west. It's like a bridegroom, it has a charted course, it knows where it's going. Do you believe that? The sunshine is on a plan, and clearly he's saying that that plan is from God. Sunshine starts at the east from to the west, and is clearly on this plan, so my clicker is not working. That's the sun. And it's all by the work of God. He wants us to worship. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds that you have made, don't take it for granted. Some of the Pictures from James Webb Telescope came into play just recently. These are actual pictures. I didn't take them. They're given from the Space Agency and the James Webb Telescope. They, have, they used to have the Hubble Telescope. The new one has shown them millions and millions of miles that they never saw before. Trillions is what one writer said. How did this come? What, why did God do all this? One of the, in that dark space, they used to call it just a black, a black hole. Now they know that in that black hole are created all kinds of stars, millions of them constantly. What's going on? Human beings cannot fathom this, cannot perceive it, Star Wars didn't say enough about a creator. Clearly, all this is from God who has put these things in the air to say, check it out. Do you believe in the creator? I'm asking you, do you honor him as your creator and Lord? That's what he asked us to do. And clearly, in, in all of this, his glory shines. And nothing is more amazing than the creation of a child. By the union of love and the act of marriage, 
God has ordained that the process of birth happens. And we should never just take for granted our own heartbeat or our brains. Worship means you respond to your Creator. Do you do that? Do you just yawn that you have another day to live? And here we go. The psalmist is saying, come on. Sunrise, sunset, one of the songs says, quickly go the days. I know I put those uh, on the wrong side of sunrise, sunset. But it's hard to know which side of the lake we're, we're on. Uh, clearly, they tell you that the sunrise will be at this exact minute tomorrow. You can look it up. And the sunset, why? Because God has a path for the sun as it goes and the orbiting of the earth. We're doing that right now. Nobody feels it, but we're doing it. And it's all His wonder. But the wonder of wonders, you know this, if you believe in Christ, is that God actually sent His Son into this universe created Mary's pregnancy just like that. If he says it, it is so. Mary is pregnant. And the baby, the embryo, nine months, is Jesus. Hello, the eternal God, the Son, becomes a human being to show us how to live. And also, after living a perfect life, to take all of our sins with him to the cross. Do you believe that? Do you, just, do you just yawn at that? That every one of your sins was put on the back of Christ Jesus as he died on the cross. Your sins tomorrow and Tuesday were paid for by the eternal Son of God. In Corinthians it says, he was made sin for us. Whoa! Who knew no sin in order that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. The moment you believe not just in the Creator, but in the Savior and what He did on the cross, His death counts for your sins. Whoa! Do you believe that? When you trust Him as your Savior, His death counts for you. When He said it is finished, He didn't mean I am finished. He meant the plan from Old Testament on. A woman shall conceive and bear a son. The seed of the woman will crush the snake. That's Satan. Genesis 3. And all those prophecies in the Old Testament Put your hand on the head of the Lamb, son. That's, that was done millions of times in Israel. The son says, why, God? Why, Father? Because you're transferring your sins to the Lamb. When Jesus appeared, John the Baptist, his cousin, said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The moment you put your faith in God, in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross, that counts for you. Your sins are paid for. Do you trust Him that way? What's more, nobody goes to heaven with a zero. When you put your faith in Christ, the righteousness of Christ covers you in God's sight. You're made perfect in His sight only because of Jesus Christ. Whoa! That's what salvation is. Not raising your hand and saying, okay, I believe, or going forward at Billy Graham and not knowing what... Trusting the, Jesus Christ for your sins as you admit them. And the Bible says, Romans 4, our faith is counted as righteousness. So He covers us with His perfection the moment we believe. That's part of the great story of creation also. The second part of the psalm is about the Scriptures. You ever read the Bible? 
His truths are eternal. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing, refreshing the soul. Now he names a couple things. Laws are laws. You know that. Not everybody believes that, but this is what we're called to obey. The laws are things like don't swear. Don't, don't take God's name in vain. Uh, honor Him. Honor your parents. There are laws of God all through the Old Testament, not just the Big Ten. The middle of verse 7 says, The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. These are things that he says are so. That God hung the world in space and it's there by his command. Statutes of the Lord are, don't lie. Love your neighbor. These are commands and statutes that are on the books by God. And they're good. He goes on to say, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Some of the precepts are, you ought to worship. I ought to worship God and not just think I'm cool. Not just wake up in the morning and think it's all my credit. Precepts are, honor your father and your mother. It is good to be honest. Never lie. Those are the precepts of the Lord, not of Joe Biden. They are what God has given us. And so the second part, he honors the word of God. The commands, the fear. In verse 9, he says, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. You fear God? It doesn't mean shake. It means you honor him as Lord of the universe and I should obey him. Live your life with no regrets. Or whatever's in the past, give it to Him for forgiveness and then live with no regrets. Verse 10, They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. That's what he says because he lives out where he has to eat honey. We'd probably say, I like it better than my favorite sports team, which, of course, is Notre Dame. <laughs> Whatever your favorite thing, we ought to be able to say, I honor the Word of God more than that. It's so easy to neglect it. So he's saying to us, this is the way to live. The Bible answers questions we all have. What happens when you die? It's very clear. Where do you go forever? It's very clear. How do you forgive someone you don't like? It's very clear. How do you live life with honesty? The Bible is clear. Jesus often said, in other words, go and sin no more. So clearly, our heart should obey the Word of God. Do you do that? It's so easy to come to church. I know that. I go every Sunday, especially if I'm speaking. <laughs> it's another thing to honor Him as Lord of life every day and to obey the clear Scripture commands. Some of you know the story of Solomon that one day, it looks like a dream, but I think it was a very clear time in his life at night when God said to him, I'll give you a great gift. Any one wish you have, I will grant. Wouldn't you like to have that? Would you take a, a special car? No, take what Solomon did. We all do that. We all have a main goal in life. He said, I just want to be wise. And wisdom comes from the Scriptures. Do you believe that? It's one thing to go to church and honor the Word on Sunday. It's another to say, this is my guide. The most famous umpire that ever lived, I bet you don't know his name, maybe one of you do, Bill Clem, he's in the Hall of Fame, umpire major leagues. But the famous story about Bill Clem was when a player came into home plate one time, there was a collision the, the the catcher fell over, the runner fell over, 
and the crowd is yelling, and so are the players, safe, he's safe, and others are yelling, out, he's out. They're prejudiced by which team they're for. Bill Clem, notably in the history books, you can find it on, on your website, not now, on your phone. He looked at the audience and yelled, hearing he's safe, he's out. He ain't nothing until I decide. The scriptures say what God has decided is right. You believe that. Matthew 7 says, when you build your life on the Scriptures, you build your life on a rock. What a day to show this picture of people studying that we've got to study the Bible. And do it in your groups. Don't just talk and have coffee. But do it personally. What a day to talk about these two men especially with the events of last night, but also the antagonism between people. But way in front of, it's hard to believe this, and it's an important decision coming up, way above this is your decision about creation and the Word of God. So look how the psalmist responds we should give God glory as well. Verse 12. Who can... uh, Verse 11 says, By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. For who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins that they may not rule over me. Then I will be blameless innocent of great transgression. Notice he said, clearly, God, keep me from my hidden faults, things we do that we don't even think of. Help me obey you, the hidden things. And then he says, keep your servant, verse 13, from willful sins, the call to holiness. Would you say that today? God, Help me obey you in those things I do that are mistakes or hidden sins in my life, but also willful sins where I decide I'm going to get even. I'm going to respond with hate instead of love. I'm going to lie or say something that's not true in our lives. So our call to holiness is to watch our lives, and His Word helps us. Who has not consciously, but not deliberately, thought wrong thoughts, and then they come? Who has not hit back or kept on the Internet something you shouldn't be looking at? Who has not had willful sins of getting even We're saying the wrong thing. And the psalmist says, God, help me. Is that you? Would you be willing to make that commitment? Martin Luther, a great reformer, was famous for saying, we only have two days. Today and that day. That day in the Scripture is the day of the Lord when we stand in front of God. Whoa! In front of Christ and give account of our lives. And he says, we only have two days. We don't, nobody in the room knows if you'll be alive Monday, tomorrow, or Tuesday. The point is, live today in the light of that day. And the psalmist says, oh God, keep me from hidden sins and also willful sins. Will you make that same pledge? Will you say, I want to honor His Word? I want my dominant purpose in life to be to obey Him as Lord. His precepts, or the way He speaks of this, in verse 14, may the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and our redeemer. A famous prayer, a beautiful prayer for every day. May the words of my mouth and what I think about, if you do these, if I do these, I'm living a straight life to obey God. And all of us fail, but we need to come back to this every day. May the words I speak, James said, if you say the right things, you're a perfect man. If you control your tongue, you will obey Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What two names are stronger than those? God is our rock. Build your life on the rock. Honor Him as the foundation of your life. Our rock, a solid rock, is Jesus Christ. We build our lives on Him. Is that you? You seek to honor Him? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, very important title, our strength and our Redeemer. Will you do that? What a great reminder. He's our strength, but He's also our Savior, our Redeemer and friend. He's not after you to get you. He's after you to save your hide and to give you the grace of forgiveness forever and ever. There's a great reminder in the Scriptures that Job says, 42.3, he's talking to God. He says, you ask, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? That's Job. It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. That's what I'm doing right now. Talking about things that are far too wonderful. Creation. Scripture. But God, in the three chapters before this, brings Job out on the hillside. Job's starting to question and believe his advisors, who are not good advisors, and saying, maybe he sinned, and maybe he did wrong, and Maybe this, maybe that. And God says, Job, read 39 to 40 and 41 sometime. Where were you, Job, when I created the heavens? Job, where were you when I made the, the crocodile? Tell me if you know. Job, do you know where I store the lightning bolts? And Job goes, huh? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth and started the orbiting of the earth? Do you know all this stuff? Sometimes Job and his friends started acting like they could figure everything out. Sometimes you know friends that do that. They have the answers to everything. No. Where were you? I was nowhere. I must trust God's revelation. I must look at his creation and say, Oh, that's so far above me. I trust him. Will you do that? Will you always live your life related to honoring Jesus Christ, Lord of creation, who gives his life for us, who rises from the dead to show that it worked and to be our justification, as it says in Romans? True of you? The psalmist writes this gorgeous psalm, and the reminder is, for us, honor Jesus Christ, creator of the universe. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And this life is the light of men. It shines in our heart to say, you got it. You're forgiven. What a way to live. In the name of the Father, 
Lord of the universe and of the Son who created it all by the work of his hand and the, the word of his power and strength. And the Holy Spirit who can change our lives a day at a time. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, help us believe that you're Lord and trust you through Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. We honor you, creator of the sun and the moon and the stars and every planet, the billions and billions. Thank you. Thank you for life and new babies and all that you've given us through grace and Christ. Take a moment, not out loud, but just quietly in prayer, thank God for creation. It would be great to hear all these people in heaven, for them to hear us quietly saying we love you and we honor you as our creator. If you're sure of salvation in Christ, quietly thank him for that. Sins totally forgiven, washed away. If you're not sure of what that means, please talk to someone afterwards. Please let me help someone to point you to total forgiveness in the Lord of the universe who died and rose again. Lord, until that great day when revelation is true, when the, the, everything is wrapped up, maybe tomorrow or whenever it is, help us love you and obey you. And we thank you through Jesus Christ our Lord.